Welcome to this one hour presentation. This presentation is Make Your Standards Sing in Harmony with WISDOT Standards. My name is Eric Gates. I work for Envision CAD as a Civil 3D Implementation Specialist. I am a consultant member of the WISDOT Methods Development Unit. I have been in the AEC and construction industry since 1990 using Autodesk tools and applications. The tools and options shown in this presentation are processes built into the AutoCAD Civil 3D environment and do not require heavy programming to create a custom process. Session Objectives The goal today is to help you understand the basic Civil 3D startup and autoload processes so you can begin developing your own Civil 3D startup strategy for your own standards, tools, and processes. You will be introduced to a few common issues and shown how to create a basic solution. This is a lot of information to cram into the next hour, uh, so I will try my best to hit the highlights. This information is usually given by Envision Can in a five hour course. This presentation will include a data set that you can use and review as part of today's handouts. The zip file includes all the files and reference material that I will show here today, along with the working plugin example that you can try. Let's first take a look at how WISDOT leverages Autodesk startup tools and we'll examine the WISDOT standards configuration. They use a desktop shortcut to load or set WISDOT profiles during the application startup. WISDOT uses a plug-in bundle to auto-load the WISDOT ribbons, regardless of which profile is current. Now let's take a look at the desktop shortcut that WISDOT uses. Let's refresh by learning how to start AutoCAD with different profiles. You can set up one or more shortcut icons on the Windows desktop that will start AutoCAD and Civil 3D and begin the drawing process using a specified profile, ARG file. An ARG file is a settings profile that has been exported from Civil 3D with the .arg extension. The way this works is in the target text box of the properties of the shortcut, we will put a dash P. This is a switch that tells the shortcut to start a specific profile. After the dash P, we will put in the name of our ARG or the name of our profile. If your profile does not already exist in Civil 3D, we will need to put the entire path of the ARG along with the ARG name. If the profile already exists, meaning that it already is in Civil 3D, when you open up Civil 3D and you go to the options, the profile exists, or you don't want to automatically load the profile if it does not exist, then you would simply put a slash P and then the name of your profile. Let's see how this works with the WISDOT shortcut icon on the desktop. If we right click on the shortcut, we can see that in the target we have the path of the ARG file, which is in the WIS.2018 bundle, and the name of the ARG file 2018WIS.ARG. When we start Civil 3D, this shortcut automatically sets the 2018 WIS.profile profile current. If we go to the options, we can see that the 2018 WISDA is current. It is also loaded, meaning that it's in the, in the available profiles section. Notice also that the WISDA design, WISDA sheets, and WISDA tools ribbons gets loaded at startup. This is a process of the bundle. So to reiterate, the profile gets set and or loaded from the icon shortcut. The ribbon gets loaded from the bundle. Now that we know how WISDOT starts the application, we can take advantage of that and leverage some of the tools that they use for our own uses. So the issue. Today we are a firm that has created our own standards along with a profile that has passed to those standards that we want to share with others in our firm. We want to develop a configuration so we can switch between our profile and the WISDOT profile without having to manually import the profile and set it current or lose access to the ribbons and tools WISDOT ribbon and tools and access our own tools without having to exit Civil 3D and or use a different shortcut on the desktop. Let's get started. Solution. We're going to create our own AutoCAD plugin. What is an AutoCAD plugin? Here we'll take a quick look at a definition. A plugin bundle is one of the methods that can be used to deploy your LISP 
files. So if we had list files, we can deploy them using this plugin bundle. Fundamentally, a bundle is simply a folder structure with its topmost folder having a dot bundle appended to its name. So we could have a my bundle dot bundle. It also has a manifest file with the file name package contents dot XML located in the topmost folder. So what else do we need to know about a bundle? It needs to have a dot bundle folder as its first folder. Secondly, to use the bundle with AutoCAD, we need to copy the bundle folder and all of its contents into one of the following locations so that all users can access the files. There are two user profile locations and then there's a app data location. Also, there's a note here, app auto load system variable controls when the bundles are loaded into AutoCAD. By default, bundles are loaded at startup. When a new drawing is opened, and when a plugin is added to the application plugins or application add-ins folders. You can use the app auto loader command to list which bundles are loaded or reload all the bundles that are available to AutoCAD. So where do we save our plugin folders and files? We're going to save it in C, Program Data, Autodesk, Application Plugins. Let's take a look at an Autodesk Auto Loader white paper that is very handy. There's a, quite a bit of information here. I'm going to skim and, and hit a couple highlights. This file has a wealth of information and I suggest that you do some further reading to gain more information. Here it describes the auto loader. The auto loader plugin mechanism simplifies deployment of your plugin application. This is done by allowing you to deploy your plugins as a simple package format, a folder structure with a dot bundle extension, along with an XML file placed in the root of the folder structure. The XML file contains metadata which describes the components of your plugin inside the folder structure and how they should be loaded. The metadata XML also contains information about which Autodesk products it runs with, operating systems it supports, and also Autodesk version series and or verticals that it will run with. The AutoCAD implementation of the Auto Loader not only supports the loading of plugin runtimes modules such as ARX, DBX, Lisp, FAS, and VLX, all of which are versions of programming, but it'll also support the loading of other AutoCAD module types such as CUX files and tool palettes. CUX files, we'll find out, are menu files or the menu files that create the ribbons. Now, what do we want our plugin to do? Let's first manually walk through the process. We're going to open WIS.Civil3D using the desktop shortcut. This will open up the WIS.profile profile like we saw before. Note the desktop shortcut is loaded and or set WIS.profile profile current. Next we'll go into options and we have a profile but we want to export that profile so that others can share it. So we'll grab my profile, we'll hit export and we will export it to C for our case training ACEC config harmony and we will call it my profile and save. To import that profile we would need to delete the existing profile and or on another machine that didn't have it you would just import have to browse to that location and import import my profile, apply close. And then you would set it current, right? So you come over here, hit apply, and set it current. If you want to switch back between the other profiles, you come in here, set current, apply, okay. And that would be the manual way of having to do it. What we want to do is we want to have it so at startup, this profile gets loaded, and then we have some sort of automation mechanism so we don't have to go into options to flip back and forth between the profiles. Now let's see how we can automate that process. So what do we want our plugin to do? Our plugin needs to load automatically at startup. Our settings profile needs to be imported at startup. Our ribbon needs to automatically load at startup. Our ribbon will need two buttons. A function that sets our profile current and then a function that sets the WIS.profile current. This will allow us to switch back and forth between our profiles. 
So next we need to know what files we need in our plugin. Well we're going to need an ARG file. That's our profile saved and exported as a file. We're going to need a list file because we're going to need a couple functions. Those functions that are going to switch the profiles back and forth. So this function will automate the manual process. We need a CUI file because that will be the ribbon. That will be the ribbon menu where we have our little buttons and those buttons will run little list files that will switch the profiles. We're going to need an XML file because a bundle will not work without an XML file. An XML file is a manifest file that gives directions to our plugin. So it's going to tell us what lists to load, what menus to load, and when to load them, when we want to, them to load at startup. And then we're going to need a, a myaddin.bundle, a folder name with the name of our plugin. So let's review a little bit. We need to save a profile export to an ARG file. What is an AutoCAD settings profile? It is a profile that stores settings such as the following. Default search and project file paths, template file locations, initial folders specified in file navigation dialog boxes, default line types and hatch pattern files, printer defaults, tool palette display settings, and user preferences. What else do we need to know about profiles? Profiles are user login and not device specific. So profiles are stored in the current user registry. This means that when you set a profile on a device that is specific to that user login, if another person logs in, they will not have that profile. They will need to either import that profile and set it current or have some other mechanism. So if you have a device that has multiple users, they will each need to set the profile for each user. We will need something that will automate the process. Let's learn what a Lisp file is. A Lisp file or AutoLisp is AutoCAD's inbuilt programming language. This is a procedural programming language. If you have AutoCAD full version loaded on your computer, then AutoLisp is already loaded. Here we'll learn a little bit of basics of Lisp files and useful functions. So what else do we need to know about writing a Lisp file? User-defined customized commands can be added to AutoCAD using AutoLisp. This also means that AutoCAD provides in its support some example Lisps. In our example today, we will be modifying an existing example Lisp. Wistat does not use the SS startup function. How can we use the startup function? Well, let's first find out what the SS startup function is. This is a function that you can add to a Lisp file that will force the other Lisp files or functions. So if you have multiple lists, it would call those other functions and force them to run during the application startup sequence. Here's some useful information from Autodesk. So we want some AutoLisp routines to load automatically when you start AutoCAD. Here we can see a solution if a special function, s colon colon startup, is defined in an ACAD Lisp, it will be executed. An s colon colon startup can be put in any Lisp. An ACAD Lisp is a special Lisp file that if it exists in any one of the search paths designated in a profile, it will run and run at the startup of the application. If an ACAD doc Lisp file is in any one of the profile's search paths, it will run each time a drawing is started up. Here we can see we would define a s colon colon startup and then we can just tell it to load a Lisp, load one of our Lisps. If you do not want to place the AutoCAD Lisp routine in your AutoCAD search paths, you will need to include the full path. Here we see we're defining an s colon colon startup and then we load our path and then the Lisp. If the s colon colon startup function is defined like this, you may have problems if other applications use the ss startup function. If another application also wants to define a s colon colon startup, then you will have two functions and they will, can override each other. To ensure compatibility, it's better to append your code in case there is an existing ss startup function. To do that, we would define a initial function called myStartup, and then we will say load and tell it whatever to load, load our Lisp, or load the profile or whatever other function we want it to do. We can define it here, and then we will put a little if statement here, and this if statement is going to say, if you find an s colon colon startup in any one of the paths in an ACAD Lisp or an ACAD doc Lisp or any other third party Lisp, append my function to that SS startup. 
So this is a very good way, a uh, best practice to use startup. You actually don't define the S colon colon startup. You just append SS startup. If it doesn't exist, it will append it and create a new one. If it does exist, it will just append to it. So now we know what a S colon colon startup function is, and we are going to take advantage of that. What will we make our list file do? We will make four functions. Number one, import a profile, even if it already exists. Number two, import the profile when Civil 3D is first started. Number three, if the profile is present, set the profile current. And number four, set the WIST.profile profile current. Number three and number four will be functions that we will use to put on our buttons that will be on the ribbon. When we switch the profile, the ribbon will come up and we can then switch between our profile and the WIST.profile. profile. So we will need to create a list that has the functions we need, then we need to use a mechanism to load the files automatically. Then we need to have the loaded lisps run automatically. Loading the lisp and running the lisp will be two separate steps. We will learn later how to make our lisp load automatically through the use of our plugin with the XML file. Instead of starting our lisp from scratch, we can search for an existing sample of AutoLisp files. Autodesk provides a sample-profile-utility.lisp file that we can learn from and modify to make it our own. If you don't find it in your installation, it may be in your install path. That's the path I have shown here. Here you can see the sample profile utility lisp. We'll use the sample list to create new lisp file with modifications. So we'll copy and save the sample profile util.lisp and then we're going to modify the lisp so that myprofile.arg or arg loads each time civil 3d is started. We'll make sure that the lisp has a command to make my profile current and a command to make wist.profile current. If we dove into the sample profile util.lisp we would find some examples of how to write exactly what we need. Here we see import a profile even if it already exists and set it active. We can use this code. Here we find we can import the profile when Civil 3D is first started. Remember our SS startup function? We will take this information and we will adjust it slightly so that we will append our startup function instead of creating a startup function. In this lisp we can also see that if the profile is present set the profile current. There is some coding already in here for us to do that. Here we can see all the parts and pieces of the sample lisp that we added and modified and saved as my-start-add.lisp. A, we can see we are defining our function and here we are going to import the profile if it does not exist. In B, we're going to append the function s colon colon startup so it runs A, my start function. So when Civil 3D starts up, it's going to run this and it's going to load my profile if it doesn't exist. C, we're going to define a C colon my profile set. This is going to set my profile current. And also with C, we're going to create another function that is going to be called C colon wi profile set. And this is going to set the wist.profile. profile. So now we have a function to set our profile and the wist.profile. profile. We can save our lisp as my dash start dash add dot lisp. Now that we have our lisp finished, we need to have a ribbon that has buttons to run the lisp functions. What is a CUI file? A CUI file is a menu file. If we go into Civil 3D and we create our own ribbon that we can add to a workspace and we save that, it would save as a .cui file. Now let's take a minute to learn how to create and modify AutoCAD ribbon.cui file. Here we're going to access the customize user interface. We're going to use the transfer tab, new file, save button, and enter the save as dialog. There we're going to save as my addin.coix. And we're going to save this to the resource folder in a bundle. Well, that means we're going to have to create a bundle folder. Let's create a bundle folder so that we can have it all ready so that we can put all of our files into it. We need to create a bundle folder. We will call it my dash add dash in dot b u n d l e. Next when we go into that folder we're going to create a contents folder. Inside the contents folder we're going to create a 
menu folder and a resource folder. This is a common bundle structure. If we access the WIST.Dot folder structure, we can see that in the WIST.Dot2018 bundle as a contents folder, we will put a package contents XML here. And under contents, we have resources. In this case, we have windows and then menu. We're not going to have anything besides the ribbon, so the CUI file will go right into menus file. And our resources will have our Lisp file and it will have our ARG file. Now that we have that folder structure, we can go ahead and create our CUI file. In Civil 3D, we can go to the workspace pulldown and hit customize. Here we're going to create a own CUI. We can go to transfer. We can just hit new file and save. Here we're going to save it in our C training my add-in bundle and we're going to save it in contents menu. We will name it my add-in. Next we're going to add the buttons to our ribbon. So we will open my add-in CUIX. Customize all customization files and browse to my add-in CUIX. Open. So in order to add our buttons to our ribbon, we're going to need to review how to create a new command, review how to create panels, review how to create tabs, review how to add a command to a panel, review how to add a panel to a tab, save and remove our ribbon from the partial customization file list. This last piece you need to do so that it is not in the existing location. You're going to want to share this CUI in the bundle, but you're not going to want to have this CUI loaded locally. So I will review these rather quickly because of the time constraints. Hopefully you can use this video and the documentation that I've given you to do these steps. First, we will need to create two commands. We will create a command for our function my profile set. If we go to the star button and we hit create a new command, new command comes up. We can rename it my profile set. When we come over to the properties section to put our function, we will put a underscore and then parentheses C colon my profile set, close parentheses. And that will call up our function from our Lisp. Next, we'll do the same thing for our WIST.Dot profile set. We could put descriptions in here and we could also put command display names if we wanted to. Next, we'll go up to the ribbons and we have panels. Right click on panels, new panel, and we will name this panel my profile switch. Once we have our panel, we can add our tools to the panel. To do that, please select our tool, press the left mouse button, hover up until we get to row one. And we could just put them in a single row for this demonstration. Row one, my profile set, and we'll do the same thing for the Wii profile set. I'm dragging it, holding my left mouse and dragging it up to row and then right below. So now if I go to the panel, we don't see anything in the panel yet because we have to add a name to the tools. When the each of the command gets added as a tool in the panel, it has a display name. We need to add a display name here as well. We will call it my profile for the my profile set. And for the Wii profile, we will call the name Wistot. Here we have the button style. The button style is small without text. And so we'll just say small with text. Now we will go to the My Profile and we will do the same thing. Small with text. So if we go up to the panel and we can see that our panel has My Profile button and a Wistot profile. Notice they're on one row. If we wanted to have them on two rows, we can simply go to row one, new row. It's going to add a row two. Notice that it added it below the slide out. Slide out means that it's going to be a pull down on the ribbon. We're going to want to add that above the slide out and you will need to add it all the way up so that it's in row two there. And then grab my profile and simply put it into row one. Now we have a row one and a row two. You can see the panel preview over on the right hand side. So we have a panel with our tools in it. 
Now we need to put our panel in a tab. When you look up here, you'll see that these are panels, this create design. Each one of these is a panel. The tab is the actual tab up here. So we need to make a tab so that we can see the ribbon panel. So here we're going to create a tab and we're just going to say new tab. We will call it my profile switch. Now that we have a tab, we have to now drag our panel into our tab. My profile switch is going to go into my profile switch tab. So now we have a tab with my profile switch. Setting the default display to add to workspaces and setting the workspace behavior to merge or add tab will guarantee that our ribbon gets placed in any of the profiles that are set current. We're going to simply hit apply for all our changes. I like to hit the save button for the CUI and hit OK. Now that we have our CUI finished, let's do a little review. How does the bundle folder work? What controls when a plugin application is loaded? That's the app auto load option. There are numbered options, zero through eight, and any combination of those. Here we see zero, do not load plugin application at any time. All the rest of the settings, one through eight, display all messages when loading plugin applications, load plugin applications at startup, load plugin applications when a new drawing is open, and load plugin applications when they appear in the plugins folder. So you can have any combination of those numbers set to set how you want the app auto load function to work. Next, we need to create the XML file. Remember the manifest file that gives directions to our plugin? So how do we create the XML file? Ah, find and copy a package contents XML file. Well, where can we find one of those? Let's copy the package context XML file from the existing WISDOT bundle to our new bundle folder. Go to C Program Data Autodesk Application Plugins WISDOT 2018A.bundle. And when we open that up, we can see the package contents XML. I'm going to copy this and I will paste it into our bundle. We can open this up using XML Notepad or WordPad or even Notepad. On top I have the copied packagecontents.xml file copied from the WISDOT bundle. Below I have the converted version modified already. Just wanted to show you a little bit of the parts and pieces. Just some schema information and you can put in your information here. I put in just my module, my first add-in, and me for the author names. Then you get down to the uh, details and then there's the runtime requirements, and then there's components. All of this can be removed so that you can simplify it to where we just have company details, a single runtime information, and then we'll have a components entry for the CUI, a components entry for our Lisp. And this last components entry is just a placeholder if I want to put any other types of things. Now we'll take a little deeper dive into the package content XML file. Here we're going to modify this file. We're going to set the bundle support path. This path will get added to the AutoCAD search file path. So the support path will be dot, which stands for the dot bundle. So it's going to look in the dot bundle. And then we have the contents folder and the resources folder. That's our support path. That's where we are going to have our ARG file and our Lisp file. Next, we're going to look at the series min and series max attributes. This sets what versions of Civil 3D you want this bundle to use. Here, we're going to set the series min to R22, which converts to Civil 3D 2018. So we have the series min and series max set to Civil 3D 2018. The platform is Civil 3D and the operating system is a 64-bit. Next, we're going to edit a components entry to include the CUI name, path, and description. Here we're going to add the app name, call it my add-in menu. Version really doesn't matter, you can put a 1.1.1. The module name, here again we're going to put a dot, and then the contents folder, and then the menu folder, and then the name of our CUIX file. There's a location for a description, and then finally we have a load on AutoCAD startup. We want to set this to true. That will make the menu load on the startup. Next, we're going to get to the component entries. 
we're going to edit a component entry to include the Lisp name, path, and description of our my-start-add Lisp. So in the app name, we have our my-start-add. In the module name, we have the dot, then the contents folder, then the resources folder, and then the name of our Lisp. Again, there's a place for description. And finally, we're going to set load on AutoCAD startup to true. This is going to automatically load the Lisp at startup. So we've gone through the basic steps of creating our own add-in to load our own standards. We have solved our issue by creating a simple add-in bundle. This package loads our own tools, menus, and allows the user to switch profiles. The last thing we need to do is take our bundle and copy it to the application plugin folder. Before we do that, let's just take a review of what files are in that bundle folder. In our myAddIn.bundle, we open up the bundle, we have our package contents XML. This is going to tell the bundle how to act, what to load, and when to load it. Next, we have a contents folder. Inside the contents folder, we have a menu folder. In the menu folder, we have our COIX file. This is our menu ribbon file. If we go back to the resources, in our resources, we have our myprofile.arg. This is our exported profile that we want to share with all of our users. Finally, we have our my-start-add.lisp that has the functions to automatically load a profile and to set a profile current. And those functions in there set our profile current and also set the wist.profile current so we can switch back and forth. So now we're ready to copy the bundle to the application plugin folders and then we will open up Civil 3D and review the results. Now we'll copy my add-in dot bundle from our training location and we will go to C program data Autodesk application plugins and we'll paste it here. We will open up Civil 3D 2018 using the WIS icon. And now we can see on our command, my profile imported. And if we go up to the ribbon, we see my add-in. When we click there, we see my profile tool and a wist.profile tool. If I click on my profile, it's going to switch to my profile. We can check this out by going to the options. And my profile is set current. Go back into the add-in ribbon and click on the wist.profile. dot profile. And now the wist dot profile is current. Notice that our tab ribbon stays no matter what profile we're in. Just to verify, we'll go to options and we are in our wist dot profile. Once we have the ability to switch between these profiles, we can then add our own settings to these profiles and maintain the ribbons, both the dot ribbons and our own. So that's a real quick review on how you can, with a little bit of effort, create your own add-in and load your own standards. It requires a list file, a menu file, and a bundle with an XML file in it. Well, let's brainstorm additional options that we could have done. We could have skipped the bundle and just add a lisp command to the wist.bundle. bundle. This requires coordination with the wist.updates. updates. Since the wist.bundle bundle already gets loaded, we can just then add a lisp into that folder every time we get that. Uh, we could create a button on a ribbon to switch tool palettes. This switches the tool palette paths. This way we can add company standards and tools to a palette. It's easy to add without needing to edit or add a CUX file. So there's those options, and I'm sure there's many others. I hope I gave you a little information to start you off on how you can have your configurations and standards work in harmony with the WIS.configuration. Thank you.